Monday Morning Racer here once again. You're under quarantine. I'm under quarantine. Everybody's under quarantine. It's another quarantine special brought to you on Drag Racing TV, which is brought to you by Strutmasters.com, the suspension experts. And this time on the Zoomcast, we've got, we've got Mike Janice Jr. on the line. Mike, look, how's it going in western New York currently for all of you folks that are under lockdown? Uh, I guess it's going as good as possibly can be going right now. Uh, kind of a really rough deal for everybody, so we're just taking it day by day and just trying to trying to stay afloat. Yes, sir. See that you're in the shop. Got a bunch of trophies behind you. Got that beautiful pro mod behind you. What's going on in the shop? Is it business as normal, or have y'all had some changes within the shop with everything that's going on? Yeah, with everything that's going on right now, we've kind of been forced to, we have a, you know, we do have our engine shop with superchargers, and so that's one division of our business, and then we also sell four-wheelers, snowmobiles, side-by-sides, and we have a whole, you know, power sports division, and uh, with a retail store, so we were forced to shut that down by the state, and just trying to do minimal orders, you know, just kind of like a curbside pickup, and uh, machine shop, we're, we're keeping that running right now, trying to keep all the guys healthy, no one in the building, no one out. Uh, just so we can keep it going once this once the smoke clears and everyone's ready to go again everyone's going to have their parts and engines and you know all, all new r&d stuff so we're just trying to keep the, the gas pedal down as best we can right now and stay positive definitely you know i think a lot of folks don't realize that uh jansen it's more than just the superchargers and the engines y'all got that power sports side of it how was this year in western new york i mean really there wasn't that much snow for the guys that get out on the snowmobilers and do that thing. So what was this type of year for the power sports side? How did it go? And then, you know, you're hit with this Corona deal. It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't the greatest winter for snowmobiling. Um, luckily the machine shop's pretty busy, you know, 12 months out of the year. Uh, the power sports side with side-by-sides and four wheelers, that's pretty busy almost 12 months. So the snowmobiles, it's hit or miss, you know, you got to rely on a good winter. I wasn't the greatest winner, but, you know, we still did pretty good. We don't have a whole lot of inventory left, which is good. And then, uh, you know, we're getting, you know, geared up for our spring sales for, you know, for early orders for snowmobiles for next year, um, getting ready for the spring orders for all the four-wheelers and side-by-sides. And then the corona deal hit, and it's kind of been uh, kind of a big spiral. So we're just trying to trying to all stay positive and, and, you know, just holding each other up right now. Well, let's dive in a little bit about Jansen. You know, definitely people at their local drag strip, they'll see that sticker on, you know, maybe the hood scoop or the fender, and you've got the Jansen racing engines. But it's more than just drag racing. Clue us in on how wide of a range in motorsports Jansen racing engines are going. Like, for example, I'm wearing an Empire State Coolers hat. Uh, Y'all got your hands into the uh, tractor pulling scene as well. Yeah, so we're actually celebrating our 62nd anniversary this year. Um, family owned and operated since 1958. Um, my grandfather started it. It's my dad and uh, three of his brothers own it right now. You know, so we run run full time on, on that deal. And it's, uh, you know, anything from, you know, drag racing, circle track, drifting, uh, your classic hot rod engines, uh, tractor pulling, you know, anything you could think of, marine, we, we, we do it. We do it all. So it's pretty, pretty diversified and, you know, everybody's, you know, treated the same. doesn't matter if you have a million dollars or you got $10, we treat everybody the same and we have been for 62 years. Yes, yeah, been around for a long time. I know I was watching a couple of weeks ago, some old racing action. I believe it was U.S. Nationals, still black and white. And I saw this Willis yeah. pull up and it was dancing on it. And I'm like, wow, they go back that yeah. far. So that's a pretty cool deal. How does it feel? You know, you're Mike Janis Jr., you're, what fourth fifth generation now in this jansen deal what does it feel like to be really kind of the next guy to take it forward and continue the name and those things be resting on your shoulders in the future i don't know a lot of people ask me that i mean to me it's not you know i try not to think of it like that i'm just uh I consider myself just a piece of the puzzle you know we have a lot of a lot of really talented guys you know working here and you know guys that are irreplaceable so you know surround yourself with good people good things happen and then you know I'm just a piece of the puzzle and, you know, glad to be part of it. Awesome, man. That's stellar. I'm sure Jansen's going to have a great future forward with you and others that are partnering in 
with it. I've got to ask, with all that Jansen goes into the combinations, what's been the strangest one that has come into the shop or you know that that engine is going out and fitting into that particular application? Which one you step back and you go, wow, we've got one of our engines in that. That's just crazy. I mean, it's <laughs> there's pr probably a little bit of everything, but I mean, we were doing back in the day, I think it was in the mid-2000s, we were doing some stuff for some drifting, some high-dollar drifting cars down south. So, I mean, something like that was something you never never would have thought you would have done. So we did a couple, you know, high-power small blocks for these things, and, and that was that was pretty cool. So that was kind of the, one of the highlights from back in the day. Very cool, man. Yeah, I knew, I knew the track pulling, obviously knew the drag racing, but the marine applications and even the drifting applications, so that's new for me hearing with Jan Sin. But that is stellar that y'all got that great reach throughout motorsports and you know you've got this drag racing background so drag racing impacting the world of motorsports that's a cool thing to hear now how does all this correlate together what's like the business model how does it flow in and out from the power sports the supercharger the machine shop and the racing engine i mean how, how does that all come together <laughs> and work out man i tell you the truth i really have no idea it's kind of every everything ends up in one big pot uh you know we all work together and it's kind of, you know, when you have a diversified business like we have, when one's down, one can, can kind of pick another one up, you know. So, you know, if the sled sales are down, you know, we might have the machine shop to pick it up. If, if the machine shop's down a little bit, we might have, you know, the power sports to pick it up. So, by like keeping ourselves diversified, and we sell all sorts of, you know, your car accessories, tonneau covers, running boards, floor mats, you know, we have a whole retail store up front. So, we're, we're constantly just, you know, any part you can you need for your, your motorsports, your your street application, anything you could really think of. I mean, there's nothing really, really we can't get. So, you know, we try to stay diversified and, you know, build a lot of the good relationships with customers throughout the years and a lot of the vendors and, and, you know, it's been very successful for us. And, you know, we just try to try to keep moving forward. That's all we can do. Well, folks, look, if you need your ATV snowmobile or all the way to most powerful engines on the planet for your Promon, check out, Jansen Racing Engine Superchargers, all those. They've got, every, got it all. It's, it's a one-stop shop. Give them a it call. Is. Well, it is. Mike, look, you've got some pretty good distinctions to your name already. Well, for example, you're the 2015 Crew Chief of the Year. You're the youngest recipient of that award from the information I could find. And that year finishing a very close second in points, what did it feel like getting that reward from your peers saying, man, you were the top dog this year. I mean, that was a, that was a pretty big deal. You know, I, I started, I've been going to the races since I've been, you know, since I've been able to walk. So I've grown up around in my whole life and, and to get an award like that, knowing that, you know, the peers are the ones that voted on it. People like, you know, your Steve Petty or Jimmy Rector or any of them guys. I mean, that was a, that was a really big deal. And like I said, I'm trying to try to stay humble and, you know, you're only as good as the people, you know, around you. So, like I said, we have a lot of good people around us, surround ourselves with a lot of good customers, a lot of good uh, employees. So those are the real people that, that, that are able to make awards like that happen. So at a race weekend, your dad's obviously in the car and you're tuning and wrenching on it. Well, how does that combination really work? Is your dad hands-on in any of the tuning and calling the shots, or is it fully your gig? And you, do you all ever butt heads on what's going to be laid down the strip? You know, how does it work out? during a race weekend? I mean, he's actually given me, I, I mean, I have pretty much full reins. Uh, you know, he might come in the trailer and look at the computer once in a while and just see what's going on. But I mean, it's, it's kind of cool. I got, I have full reins. I work uh, real close with our employee of 20 years, Kevin Peters. He does all our supercharger R and D and that. And so we're, we're, you know, he comes in the trailer and we're constantly working together. And so my dad kind of is just hands on with, you know, motor, making sure everything's right with the car and that. And, you know, kind of, kind of leaves us to be able to stare at the computer and decide what, you know, what's going to be best shot for the next round. So it's kind of been a, you know, been a philosophy that's worked really good for us recently. And, you know, you, you have to be able to concentrate on that computer and, and really pay attention to what's going on. If you're out there, you know, changing cylinder heads or, you know, adjusting valve, you, you just don't have time to concentrate. So, you know, we've been, you know, that's the, just the best way we've been able to do it. Just kind of keep, keep myself inside the trailer, staring at the computer and, you know, myself and Kevin, and it's just worked out really well for us. Well, it definitely has. I mean, your dad had the championship in 2001, but then there was a switch, and really 04 and 2018, definitely your huge parts 
of those championships and then championships overseas. Uh, look, what are the challenges from a tuner going overseas and doing those races in the Middle East? What, what type of weather conditions do they have? What, what's the condition of the track? That, that type of thing. What's it like going over there and racing? Yeah, I mean, believe it or not, it's, it's not like what everybody thinks. It's actually, uh, I mean, it's a beautiful place. Qatar is a beautiful place. Jake Khaled and, and Alan Abbey performance give us the tools to be able to, you know, to succeed. And so going over there and spending, you know, four weeks, four or five weeks over there and testing, uh, you know, as testing, it's Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we qualify Thursday, Friday. Um, we get an off day on Saturday, back at the shop working on Sunday. So, I mean, we're only getting one off day a week while we're there. So it's constantly, you know, just testing. The track stays real consistent, um, you know, from morning till night. You know, the air, same with the air, too. The weather, I mean, you might see a fluctuation and maybe only a couple hundred feet is all. So it's, it's real consistent. And so if we try a different blower, different set of heads, a different converter, we're able to know, hey, yes, this was better. We're not tricking ourselves. So that's one big advantage going over. The conditions are very, you know, very, very stable. And, and they're able to, you know, help us learn a lot. So it's definitely, definitely a good experience and, and one, one you can't give up. Cool, man. I'm sure it's got to be a blast going overseas and doing some drag racing in another part of the world. Now, that beautiful Pro Mod you've got sitting there behind you, if I remember correctly, I saw it pretty early on because y'all got that new last year and really didn't get to run it that much at Empire Dragway because that event got rained out on like two yeah. days. But then it goes from there. Not too long after that, it's Indy and y'all are yep. running it. So, it's been getting the laps on it, you know, been getting used to it. Look, what do you think of the new car? Do you feel like you're getting y'all's legs underneath it? And do you think there's more leg stretching room with that particular combination right now? Yeah, I mean, no doubt. I mean, we, we brought it out, tested it. Uh, at Peter, we had a Peter A race in uh, Winston, Salem, Ohio. Back in July, we brought the car out and we went right to Empire. And then we went to Indy. And, you know, first time I went to the car, we qualified fourth. Uh, went to the semifinals. So this car, you know, Wally's group built it for us, and it's been, you know, just it's a really, really good car, very well built, and it's got our 4900 uh, Janus combination in it in the engine. So just something we've been working with, and, you know, the numbers, the numbers show, you know, we, we, we're fast, you know, no doubt about it. Our 60 foot, we're definitely lacking. We've always been kind of kind of lazy in 60 foot. It's just something, just how we roll. Um, so we're working on that. You know, in, in Qatar, we were... You know, we would go 374 in the afternoon when the track was hot. So other them guys were going 74, 75. It would come around at nighttime. We would go 374, and then, then he would go 70. So, you know, just a matter of just staying up with the track. But cars car is really good. It's making, you know, we're running really big speed to the eighth mile, uh, quarter mile. So we're, we have a lot, lot to look forward to, constant engine development we're looking at right now. So we're just going to kind of keep moving forward. But, yeah, there's a lot of potential. Very happy with the car, very happy with the combination. If we weren't, we would have parked it by now. So, like I said, we've been very successful with it. Had a lot of good outings with it. And then HRA last year ran really fast, you know, when the conditions counted. So, you know, we're looking forward to, you know, when we get back out there and, and, and open, making a run at the championship here in 2020. Well, your dad certainly has had a lot of cars over his time in driving. Uh, you being Mike Janice's son, I've got to ask, what's been your favorite car from whether it was the split window or to this one you've got right here behind you? Which one is like, man, that was dad's coolest ride? Oh, man. Uh, I mean, I was a big fan of the 63 Corvette with the Widowmaker theme. That was our, you know, a couple of championships in that car. Um, that was real special to us. Um, our 69 Camaro, the pickle car we had, we won the championship. We call that Daisy. Daisy is real special to us. That's sitting overseas right now. So, you know, you know, anybody from, you know, Dan Page, Bickle, Wally Screw, we've had, you know, G-Force race cars, a lot of race cars over the years. Um, I mean, the chassis builders are great. They do a really phenomenal job. Uh, I mean, you can make any car work. It's just a matter of, you know, just finding the, finding the fine line and, and the tuning with it. But, I mean, those chassis builders deserve a lot of credit for keeping us safe and, you know, keeping us out there. So, you know, hats off to all them and, you know, a lot of good cars over the years and got to thank them all. Well, speaking of cars, and your dad is in the car, I've read an old article found online. It mentioned that he, that he was going to be transitioning out of the seat and you were going to be getting in the Pro Mod. And, well, I guess that hasn't happened here lately, obviously, because you're tuning and he's still driving. So 
what are the plans or do you do you have aspirations to get in the pro mod or are you gonna you know just continue to do racing elsewhere or are you fine with tuning what's the deal on that yeah that was probably that was probably one of our april fool jokes at the time um no but honestly i mean everybody asked me that you know being the son of a you know championship driver are you gonna drive are you gonna drive and i mean i i i can honestly say no you know i just enjoy doing i enjoy doing this right now and you know have a wife and three kids at home uh you know so it's a lot you know it's a lot lot of my plate and uh would i mind getting in and doing a burnout and leaving the line yeah i would love to do it but you know you just need so much experience in one of these cars and you know and, and he's been doing it for a long time and you know when you get to this level i mean you can't make mistakes you know you gotta you have to be ahead of this and you know be ahead of what the car is doing and uh you know with that that comes experience so so me jumping into something like this probably wouldn't be that great of an idea yeah as a tuner man look what's what's the line how ragged is the edge as it were of giving performance and driver comfortability in these cars because these door slammers i mean it was amazing when you know bill kuman years ago went a six flat in a door car and now they're doing well beyond that over 250 they're pretty wild they're the wildest they've ever been so how do you balance performance and drivability I mean, the biggest thing is making the car stable, you know, with, with downforce and that, making sure you're not, you know, going all over the track like a pro stock car. So all these cars got, they got really good downforce. They're built really well, um, very strong. So we try to make them, you know, nice and rigid. So nothing's, nothing's moving around and, you know, that's all you can really do. But like I said, the, having the driver experience is the, is the biggest thing. And, and you know, you, you got to stay ahead of one of these things. You got to know, you know, that thing's moving, you better, you know, if you're trying to move it after it's moving, you're already too late. So that's the biggest thing, just knowing what it's going to do and having a good feel for it. And, you know, that comes with nothing more than pure experience. All right, Mike. So I've been able to talk to a few other pro mod drivers, even a few tuners, before getting you on this particular Zoom cast. And let me ask you a few questions that I've asked them. All right. So there's a new power adder that has come into NHRA Pro Mod, the Pro Chargers. Your thoughts on Pro Chargers coming into NHRA Pro Mod? I didn't hear what you said. You said, pro, that's a really stupid idea. <laughs> the pro chargers, then coming into NHRA Pro Mod. Oh, yeah, the, the pro chargers, those things. Uh, yeah. What, what are you going to say? You run a pro charger? <laughs> man, you're not a man if you don't have a belt on there slinging around. So I have nothing to, nothing to say. Pro charger guys, I mean, they're it's it's a... You know, it's going to be a, a deadly combination, I think, when the tracks are really good. Uh, when we get normal conditions, under NHRA conditions, I think, you know, you'll see a little different forecast. But, I mean, they're taking advantage of what they can right now. I, not, not, totally, not totally for it, you know, seeing what, they, what they're capable of, possibly. So they're, they're definitely uh, they're, they're sandbagging a little bit right now, no doubt about it. Wow, man, Mike just gave me my newest T-shirt idea. You're not a man unless you got a belt on it with a supercharger image. That's, man, wow, there, there, there's the hot take of the week. It, Appreciate man. it, man. That's it. Got to stay Got to stay true and real to yourself. I hear you. I hear you. The, the next question I've got for you pertaining to the NHRA is, all right, so ever since I started Monday Morning Racer on YouTube, there's been a lot of folks saying, we want more pro mod, we won't want more pro mod. That's there are a lot of reaction I get from the fans and the comments. And there must be a disconnect because a lot of people don't realize that apparently the funding isn't there to go beyond 12 races. So do you think 12 races is the right number currently or maybe just a little bit more or even back to 10? Where do you think the number should be or is it at the right place? No, I mean, I, mean, I, I would bet if you brought – you know, all 40 of us drivers and crew chiefs in at one one table, I don't think you get one person that would want to do more than 12. You know, 12 is kind of the limit for, for budgets, um, for traveling. It's, you know, it's just really hard. We're not, you know, we're not a top fuel team where we're, that's what we're doing full time. You know, so, you know, 10, 12 is kind of really the max where, where it needs to be. 12 is kind of a nice number. 10's, 10 gives you a little more time where you can test a little bit. But, yeah, that's kind of the, the max number I, I think you'd want to see. We kind of always, you know, as a group, always agreed that that's, you know, 12, 14. You, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't want to get that high, you know, kind of work. And, and, I, and I'm, I'm still a big believer in, you know, you have 24, 23 NHRA races. 
you know, I still say you cut out, you know, six races and get down to 18 races. You're going to have full fields all the time in fuel cars and pro stock. You know, 24 races is a lot for a team to do, especially if you're not full time. And even for even if you're full time, these guys are having trouble finding funding for those extra six races. You know, it's six six hundred thousand dollars, seven hundred thousand dollars for those extra races. That's a lot of money to find for these guys. So, you know, I think you'd see a, a really big change if they went, you know, to eighteen race schedule. That's just my opinion. I've talked to a lot of, you know, prominent people uh, in the fuel ranks in that, and you know, same opinion. You know, they they share the same opinion with me. I've heard that regularly. Everyone has said that 12 is where we need to be at and no more, really no less. We like 12. Let's keep it 12. What is the hangup then? I haven't asked this with anybody. What is the hangup then with Promon getting extra funding? What's the deal? Is it a sanctioning body? Is it just a brand recognition? Is it, you know, people still counting this class, not up there with pro classes, even though it is, you know, what's the hangup with people? Coming in and funding all pro mod. I mean, I mean, the big deal is, you know, as as a group, you know, the RPM group, you know, we funded it for a long time ourselves, and you know, it's just if you're you're sitting there and you're an HRA and you're and you're constantly getting a paycheck, you know, we're funding it all. I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense to to change it when the money just keeps coming in, and you know, and it was time for it to finally to turn over for an HRA to take it over, which they, which they did this year. So you know, hopefully, we have a lot of big things on on the horizon. I think it's, you know, not I think, I, I would have to say it is one of the most popular classes in all of drag racing, you know, in the world. You know, there's more pro mod cars than any other class in the entire world. More fuel cars, more, you know, the nitro funny cars. I mean, pro mod is, is where it's at. Um, you know, everybody's, you know, go to your local track, there's a pro mod there. You know, so it, I think that's where the disconnect comes in. You know, we've been, we funded it for so long out of our out of our own pockets, you know, getting it going. And finally, NHRA took it over and, you know, you know, your top fuel funny car and pro stock that that's sponsored by mellow yellow or the Harleys or the uh, pro stock bike. That's, I believe that's Harley or part of the mellow yellow too. So everybody's got like an individual deal and, and, you know, now pro mod has the E3 spark plugs and JNA service. So it's, you know, everybody, they just try to keep everything, I think kind of separate. It might have, have to have something to do with going back in the days with the, you know, the old pro stock truck lawsuit and that, you know, nobody, nobody really knows, but that's kind of, kind of our beliefs, you know, you are absolutely correct. I mean, whether it's all the way down under in Australia or over in Great Britain to even small little Lancaster, New York at New York International Raceway Park, there's pro mods everywhere of all different types and ranges. So it's definitely the largest and most popular class out there. It definitely needs to be considered professional. Uh, that's the reason you got pro on the door. That's right. Now, yes, sir. Uh, now, with all that being said and mentioning NHRA, you definitely remember a lot of the IHRA days with ProMod. Let me ask, what is NHRA doing right now that they are just doing an exceptional job of with ProMod? And then what is something that you see that they could really step up and do a better job with ProMod? I mean, they're doing a good job as far as keeping us safe on the track. Um, you know, their, their, their safety as far as always there taking care of us. And, you know, they've implemented a lot of rules, um, you know, a lot of safety rules and, and, you know, a lot of guys get, you know, get upset about it. You know, us being one of them, you know, some of the rules are a little, you know, a little heinous, but, you know, at the end of the day, they're just trying to keep the drivers safe and, and, you know, keep the fans safe. And, that, and that's the most important thing. Drivers, fans, keep everybody safe to, you know, and go home to their families at the end of the weekend. So, so with safety and that, I believe they're doing a, a really good job. They've been doing a really good job in the in the tech department as far as rules go. I believe they've been doing they, the parity's been you know parity's been pretty close. Uh, I think you're going to see you might see it a little off right now with you know with the pro chargers and that, but you know that's just that's to be expected until they you know until everybody shows their hand and you know you get under the same conditions. You know we were racing in Orlando uh, begin, in the beginning of March, so I mean the track was the track was really on kill. They did a great job with the track. So not not our typical NHRA condition. So I, I don't think that was really a level playing field to to see how the, the cars would compare yet. But you know they've they've kept the parity really close. The rules they've been on top of us. You know after runs, you know checking to make sure no one's cheating, which I think is the biggest thing. We're all out there trying to make a living. You know doing this, and so the biggest thing is you know you know we just hope that nobody's out there cheating. 
So that's that's the biggest thing. If you're out there, you know, so we're just constantly trying to stay up with tech guys, make sure they're checking stuff and you know, make sure everybody's legit because you don't want you don't want anybody out there, you know, running illegal and you know, ruin it for everybody when everyone's out there trying to trying to do the same thing. So that that is what they are doing good. What they could be doing better, I believe, would be, you know, just quite honestly, just you know, just the funding and the payouts. You know, that that's just I mean, we're a professional class. I mean, we should be getting, you know, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars to qualify. That's just how that's just the fact of the situation. You know, so we're you know, right now it's based off of our car counts, which is which is a tough deal. You know, if you get 34, 34, 30, 29 to 34 cars, it's X numbers enter a race. 34 or more cars, it's, or 35 plus, it's this much to enter a race. So, so just stuff like that is kind of, kind of stuff that, that kind of, kind of hurts being a, you know, being a racer and that it doesn't matter, you know, who your sponsor is or you know, how much money your sponsor has. At the end of the day, it still, it still hurts. And, you know, like I told you before, if our customer has a million dollars or $10, you know, they still put their pants on the same way, and we're still going to treat them the same way. And and I believe we we all expect to be treated just just like that. So that is one thing I, I believe they could they could do a little better and, and help out on that. Well, we're glad to hear the NHRA is definitely keeping an eye on safety in the tech area. And sure, definitely need the payouts that you all deserve. It's not cheap to run one of those cars, and I can also understand, man, if there's 30 something cars on a pit paddock, then, you know, you're running for 16 spots. If you're not getting the help, not getting some type of kickback, why even show up? I mean, it, it right. makes it challenging, makes it challenging. Yep. All right. You mentioned the World Door Slammer Nationals. What did you think of that event that West Buck, Drag Illustrated, and SeaTech Manufacturing put on down there at Orlando? What was it like? Give me the rundown of the weekend from the tuner's perspective. I mean, first class. I mean, I mean, first class operation between you know West and Drag Illustrated, Richard Freeman, and Elite Motorsports. I mean, first class deal. Did what they said they were going to do. Paid what they say they were going to pay. Um, there was no, there was no BS. It was just a straightforward. You know. Everyone had a good time. We had a party. I think it was Friday night. Um, the run schedule. They did a really good job. You know, as good as they could with the run schedule for the facility and for what they had to work with. Um, so you know, first class operation, first class race, and it was a uh, you know a great place to have the race in Orlando. So definitely, definitely uh, knocked it out of the park in my opinion. Now the Pro Mod guys did not do what the Pro Stock drivers did. The Pro Stock drivers they drew for their spot and who they would run against and even had opportunity for some call outs and things of that nature. Are the Pro Mod boys kind of sad that they missed out on that and couldn't call each other out and lay some money yeah. on? I actually thought that that's what we were doing. I, I heard them I must have misunderstood it when I heard them that it was gonna be Pro Stock doing that. I thought it was Pro Mod. So uh misunderstood it. Yeah that would that would have definitely been fun. Um, obviously everyone would want to stay away from Captain Pro Charger, Justin Bond at the time, but, uh, you know, but, uh, yeah, that would have been a lot of fun and would have been fun to lay some money out for everybody and, you know, made it even more fun. So, yeah, I didn't even know that they were doing that until I heard it at the last minute. So that would have been one more thing that would have, you know, really made it great. I definitely think it would have. I mean, I, I want, I wanted in pro stock at least to be like, all right, Greg, call it out Eric the first round. Let's do this and put yeah. some money on it. Now in pro mod, look, who do you think y'all needed to call out? Or who do you think should have called out Mike Janice and been a number, you know, a first round matchup with some money on the line? Ricky Smith or Justin Bond or who? Who do you think should have been the guy? I mean, if it was up to my, my three-year-old kid at home, he'd want us to call out Stevie Fast Jackson. So Stevie Fast Jackson is his hero for whatever reason right now. We're trying to break that. So he's racing around the house saying Stevie Fast Jackson's beating Papa. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, probably would have been Stevie Fast Jackson and just tried to, you know, we had to run him. One time we were going to have to run him in qualifying, and I went up to him and I said, man, I said, I'm begging you right now. Just just let us win this qualifying race so I can go home tell my kid that, you know, that we won and beat Stevie Fast Jackson. So I don't have to hear it all winter. So that would that would have been a, a fun call out for sure. That sounds like one child might be disowned here so shortly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's constant, constantly uh Stevie Fast is always beating Papa. So I'm kinda kinda getting tired of hearing that. Well, I'm sure y'all got some 
things in the works for Stevie Fast and for the entire field this year with a fairly new car and are continuing in R&D. I remember seeing earlier uh, this week or last week, they had some more uh, billet blocks in and y'all were working in the R&D program. What does R&D with Jansen look like? You know, how do y'all go about, how do you prepare to find those extra horses and how much is R&D a part of it? How big is it to a program such as y'all's? I mean, it's a huge part. You know, we're, we're constantly, you know, it's, it's like anything, you know, we, I'm, you know, we've heard it for years, you know, if we're out there racing, but we're not going to, you know, give the same thing that we, you know, that, you know, that we have on our car. And, and, I, and I say the same thing, anybody, if you want, take the blower, take the blower off the car, take the motor out of the car, you just got to replace it, you know? So we're very, very important is, you know, making sure, you know, we can provide the best, the best products to our, you know, to our teammates and to our, you know, to our customers as, as we possibly can and not, uh, you know, not blow smoke. So, you know, we got a lot of good guys out there. Um, our teammate Tuttero, um, all the PJS cars, Doug Winters, the Wolves, you know, we've got a lot of NHRA cars this year. We're excited about it. And uh, the biggest thing is, you know, just the constant R&D is, you know, just never stops. We're always trying to toss ideas around and, you know, and, and you know, there might got be guys out there to say, well, you know, this, this is tapped out right here. You can't do it. Well, if you say you can't, we're going to try to do it. You know, and we, and we might fail. I mean, nine out of 10 times we might fail, but that one time that we tried, you know, we, we end up, you know, hitting, hitting, uh, you know, might hit a double or a triple instead of a home run. So it's, it's worth, you know, you know, going down that path. And, you know, so the R&D is very important, you know, for, for us and, you know, for the customers to keep, you know, great products going, you know, between drag racing, tractor pulling and, you know, in all, all arenas for us. You mentioned uh, partners and teammates. I've got to ask, with the cars that have that AAP on the side of the door, how does it work at a race weekend? Are y'all classified? Are you think yourselves as teammates, or is it like independent cooperation? How does it work at an NHRA event with everyone having the same name on the door? I mean, with each program, you know, there's four of us. We have Castellano, Snyder, Tuttero, and us. And, you know, each team is, is individual. You know, we really don't, we don't share information with each other. Um, it's kind of, you know, everybody does their own thing, which is, that, that's just how it is. And, uh, but if, you know, if somebody needs something, um, we eat dinner together mostly every night, you know, hang out in each other's pit and, and that. So, you know, but, you know, everybody runs their own operation for the most part and, and does their own thing. So that's kind of how we, how we handle that. What about those who are running Jansen and Mike Janice Superchargers, how do y'all interact with them at a Pro Modified meet? Is it just technical assistance? You know, do y'all have extra parts on the rig for people to, you know, purchase or use or, or any, anybody else running some testing and R&D stuff for you all at these weekends? Yeah, I mean, whatever, whatever these guys need, they got our name on the, on the hat or on the car, you know, it, it is, you know, we'll, we'll go out of our way, you know, if they need parts, they need motors, you know, whatever we can provide them with at, at the racetrack, and we're there, we're there for them, you know, the whole time. So, it doesn't, you know, we're that's just how we are. Even if you're not, you know, part of the team, we'll, you know, that's just how we how we do business. Definitely seen that in testing at Orlando, and not only have I seen it in testing or at Orlando, but I've seen it in testing at Lancaster Dragway too. So, y'all definitely got a big impact from pro down to lower ranks at the local scene. Look, speech, speaking of the local scene. 2019 could have been a terrible year for drag racers in western New York because it looked like they weren't going to have a drag strip in Lancaster Dragway, New York International Raceway Park. How important do you think it is to have Lancaster under Vito Anticelli and others still functioning and operating to drag racing in western New York? I mean, it was a big deal for when, when Vito, Vito and Mike Smarski purchased the track. You know, it was a really big deal. You know, like I said, there's there's no racetrack. Well, guess what? There's no racers racing anywhere, which trickles down to us. We're not building motors for anybody. So it's a trickle-down effect. It was, it was very important for the area. Uh, historic racetrack. Um, and the best thing that happened was you have two racers that got involved. So that was the, the best thing that happened out of, out of it all. Two racers that understand how racers think and, and how they want to be treated. So... You know, best case scenario, I believe big things to come um, from both, from, from everybody involved out there. So, you know, it's, it should be an exciting time in the area over the next few years. 
definitely some great things were planned for 2019. I mean, just like with everybody else, Corona virus implications have changed the outlook of that, but definitely whether it's the Buffalo Street Outlaws or any other program, Lancaster is going to have a great year out there. I think you, your dad, Mike Janice Racing Team, I think y'all are going to have a great 2020 as well. And with this last question, winding down this interview, I want to give you the last word on three areas. So, Mike, look, give me the last word from you, uh, from your dad, from the team, to your fans, partners, and your competitors. I mean, right right now is a little, little different time. Um, first and foremost, it, it's a hard time for everybody right now. So all I can ask is that we all support each other, uh, help each other. If somebody needs something, you know, do something nice for somebody. You know, it's, it's, it's a struggle for everybody right now with what's going on with this coronavirus. Um, you know, I'll be the first to tell you, at first, you know, I didn't take it 100% seriously. Um, you know, everyone says it's like the flu and that, and, you know, and, and it's not. You know, it's a very serious deal. You know, we're on lockdown here at the shop. You know, no one, you know, no customers, no customers in, no, no customers out. So, you know, the biggest thing is just, you know, just everyone's got to help each other right now. Um, a lot of prayers and, and hope that we can get through this and get back to racing. I mean, the schedule right now calls for, for us to be in Gainesville in the beginning of June. Um, I want to be optimistic and say that's going to happen. I, I, I don't I don't think so, though. Um, I, I don't see us on track until, you know, possibly Bristol, Norwalk, somewhere in that area. Um, you know, so so that's, it's, it's tough. It's tough for everybody right now. Um, sticking together, you know, that's, that's the most important thing we can do right now is you know, as a community, as a nation, um, you know, to show some love and, and stick together. So, so on that side, um, you know, that's what I have to say on that side. I, you know, big thank you to the doctors, to the first responders, um, to the police officer, anybody you can think of that's, that's doing more than, you know, building an engine in a machine shop right now. I mean, these guys, these guys are going to be the reason that, that someone like us can get back out there and race, right? Without, without them, it's not going to happen. So, you know, we, we have to give our thanks to, to them guys and big man upstairs and, you know, all the people that's, that's, that are sticking with us during this time, all our sponsors and, you know, marketing partners. And, you know, we're, we're just really excited for 2020. We hope it's, you know, it's going to be sooner than later. Um, it, it's, it's really hard to tell. It's a, it's a sad time. Um, I mean, I'm one of the most positive people you're going to meet. And I'm, I'm having a lot, of, a lot of mental breakdowns right now. Just, you know, just trying to hope, you know, you try to keep your, make sure your employees are going to be okay. Make sure your family is going to be okay, and you know it's a hard time. So I mean, I mean, God's in control, and and that's all we can hope for right now. And you know, it'll all get sorted out in the end. And hoping for a you know great 2020, and, and we have Easter Sunday next week, and you know, so it's a it's it's a big deal. So it's all we can hope for, man. Definitely, it is. Drag racing fan. That has been Mike Janice, Janice Jr. He is the head wrench on the Mike Janice machine in NHRA Pro Modified. Drag racing fan, I'm Lee Kraft, the Monday morning racer. This has been on Drag Racing TV, brought to you by strutmasters.com, the suspension ex experts. Folks, until next time, stay safe, God bless, and keep the pedal to the metal. <laughs>